camera's acting up here. Let's see if I can get that squared away. All right, everybody, so welcome back. Round three of tonight's Friday Night Magic Standard Tournament from Lost Legion Games and Comics in South Charleston, West Virginia. My name, as always, is Zachary Evans. I'm by myself tonight, but we'll have uh, someone stopping in, I'm sure, once they finish with their round. Let's get right to the action. On the right, we've got Brandon Gibbs, uh, who's playing a Gruel Aggro deck. And he's loading up with a turn one Stromkirk Noble. And Brett Rose is playing a classic Esper Control deck. Lots of sweepers, lots of planeswalkers, and he plans on milling you out. The camera's starting to act up a little bit, so let's see if I can get that sorted. So Brandon getting in with his uh, Strong Kurt Noble, then adding a second to the board. And at this point, it's just a race to see if Brett can uh, stem the tide so that he can get to four mana in his Supreme Verdict. We've been playing Magic for 20 years now, and it's still a matter of how much damage can you get before I can cast Wrath of God. So both Stromkirks get in. Looks like Brandon had kept a one land double Stromkirk noble hand, but he does draw his second mountain. Looks like he's got a madcap skills in his hand, as well as a searing spear. So that's very saucy. I guess he's just going to spear him at end of turn. Madcap skill is not necessarily good in this matchup as Brett plays uh, Azorius Charms, and you do get the potential to get blown out. Strong Kurt Novo itself not very good against uh, against Azorius Charm, let alone a Noble with an enchantment on it. So in a turn, Brandon is just going to fire a Searing Spear at Brett's head. He's going to pile in for at least five damage here. I believe I see a Gore Clan Rampager in his hand. So if he finds a green source. So there's Madcap skills. Looks like uh, looks like it's going to resolve. Brandon figuring the coast is clear here. But we're going to see uh, we're going to see a far far side of far and away bouncing the uh, bouncing the mat. No, he's going to yep yeah, yep yeah, bouncing the stronger noble with Madcap skills on it. So effectively fogging uh, Brandon for a turn. Just dropping down to 10. So Brett's found uh, his fourth land here. I'm sure just drawing that island since he played his uh, Nefalia Drown Yard on turn 3, but uh, does not have a verdict, it looks like. So this Augur Bull is going to be able to get in front of the Stromkirk, and, uh, well, maybe it is. I don't know if it's a human or not. chat confirming before I got a chance to that it's a merfolk wizard, not a human wizard. I guess I should have realized that based on the art. But an Azorius Charm is going to take out the Stromkirk Noble, so uh, Brett's done a fairly good job of resetting the board here. As Brandon recasts his Stromkirk and then a Rakdos Cackler. And we know he has another Stromkirk in his hand, but he's probably holding that back in case Brett does sweep the board. And it looks like what's going to happen here is a Augur of Bolas ends up attacking. It looks like Verdict coming, I would imagine. No! That's very interesting. So trying to figure out exactly what uh, Brett's got here, unless we've got a Restoration Angel coming. Nope, he's just going to cast them both halves of Far and Away. He's going to bounce the Stromkirk Noble and then uh, target Brandon with away, forcing him to sack the Rakdos Cackler. So Brett hasn't found a sweeper, but he's uh, gotten a lot of work out of these bounce spells. Because Brandon has gotten down to 10 quickly, but has struggled to get any damage through after that fact. So we're going to play both of our Strong Kirk Nobles here. Brandon down to just two cards in his hand, one of which I believe is a Gorg Clan Rampager, and Brandon does not have any green sources. So there's a tapped Godless Shrine. <laughs> Looks like Brett has a verdict. I guess he's just choosing on whether or not he wants to cast it or not. 
And he is at this point going to choose to reset the board. So Verdict clears the board. Brandon down to just three cards in hand after he draws here. No four, I stand corrected. He's been I imagine he's been holding this uh, Boris Reckner for a while. Unwilling to uh, play it into a potential sweeper, as it is the best answer his deck can generate post-board wipe. Let's see how Brett can answer that now. And there is an Aetherling. Interestingly enough, Aetherling played uh, without the ability to uh, to blank it. We're just going to get in for six here with the Boros Reckoner with Madcap skills on it. So, uh, Brett now in the after this Pillar of Flame resolves, he's now very much in burn range. So, Brett's going to need to come up with uh, some way of dealing with that Boros Reckoner. If he can get rid of the Madcap skills, he can block with his Aetherling and then blink it. Brandon at 18 is effectively at three turn clock if Brett was trying to race back. So he's going to draw two cards off a of revelation. I guess leaving Azorius Charm Mana open, and he could not find an answer. So despite uh, stimming the tide for quite a while there, Brett just couldn't find an answer to a late Boris Reckoner. Brandon, very, uh, playing around that situation very well, leaving the Reckoner back in his hand as a potential post-board threat. And that's what got him there. Take this opportunity to remind everybody, if you want to start your games of Magic like a boss, not unlike we, how we start each and every one of our feature matches here at the Lost Legion F&M stream, you can do so with the game of Rock, Paper, Scissors with the three cards you see pictured. And if you don't have your own playset, you're in luck. Head over to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash magic for our weekly giveaway. Look for the post I made during round two, which says we're giving away these cards. Like, comment, and share that post for three ways to enter on Facebook. And as long as you like our Facebook page, you'll be eligible to win in next week's drawing. It also shows up in my Twitter feed, at Magic, so follow me there and retweet for a fourth way to enter. And we'll be drawing for last week's giveaway tomorrow, and we'll be drawing for this week's giveaway that you're entering today, next Saturday. Are they not worth a ton of money? But they are pretty cool to have. It's one way we can give back to you guys for watching the stream, so make sure you head over there. Spread the word about the stream. Helps us out a great deal. Also want to take this time to run through a quick uh, couple mentions of our sponsors. You see over there on the left, if you're enjoying the uh, very nice double play mat that we uh, have in our feature area now. That's courtesy of inkedplaymats.com. You see their logo and website information in the bottom left-hand corner of the mat. They hooked us up with that. It's an excellent product that I highly recommend. Head over to their website at inkplaymats.com for uh, general playmat sales starting at $10 each week, as well as customized playmats starting at $25 uh, for regular playmats, and then I believe $55 for custom Double play mats like you see here. Great guys to work with. Could not have been a better experience dealing with them, so I highly recommend them. As well as highly recommending AffinityForCards.com. A lot of people have been mentioning on YouTube that the website doesn't work. It very much works. Just go to www.AffinityForCards.com for all of your magic single needs and hard-to-find cards. Obviously, we try to encourage everyone to support their local game store, but we all know that you can't find every card you need for all of your decks in your local area, so if you can't, if you're looking for hard to find magic cards, head over to affinityforcards.com and use coupon code Lost Legion, all one word, and you'll get five percent off your first order. That helps out the stream a great deal. So make sure you support those who support our stream. So.
So these guys piling into game two here. Brett's going to be on the play. Looks like he's found seven cards that he's content with. And Brandon's either still still shuffling out from post sideboarding, as I did see him have to uh, go manual and take cards out of sleeves to put cards in sleeves. Or he's on six cards here, and I guess we'll figure that out soon enough. Shout out to Spike Mo in the chat, our favorite Bostonian. Thanks again to everyone who's watching tonight. The last few weeks we have uh, set some records in terms of viewership. With a solid 180 watching now, which is well above our average for the last few months. So I appreciate you guys watching. For those uh, domestic fans of the stream, we hope you had a good 4th of July. And for all of our international fans, we hope you had a good Thursday. I had an excellent 4th of July as we built a giant slip and slide in my backyard, which I'll try to post a video of later so you can see. It was a lot of fun. All right, so we're into the match here. I uh, can't see how many cars Brandon had, see if he mulled or not. But no turn one play from him, but we are going to chain a Burning Tree Emissary into a Flint Hoof War. So a quick five power of attackers into play for Brandon. And Brett's hand I see in the Falia Drown Yard. And not much else. So we'll see if uh, we've got an Azorius Charm coming here. Neither of these targets are very good as far as uh, charms go. But we'll see if uh, one takes care of this Madcap skills. Looks like he's just going to take it all, so... Five from the Enchanted Emissary and three from the Flint Huff Boar is going to be eight. So Brett's going to drop all the way down to 12 here. On his own turn three. Not sure what they were asking about there. We do see a Terminus in Brett's hand, as he is a Terminus deck, but obviously we haven't reached the Terminus portion of the game yet. And there is a Rocks of Faith Mender, which is going to be able to block the uh, Flint Hoof Boar, but he's still going to be able to get in for five a turn with this Madcap Skilled Burning Tree Emissary, and that's of course assuming there are no Gore Clan Rampagers. Oh, <laughs> in a second Madcap Skills comes down. Should be 11. Should put him all the way down to 1 in a Rampager. It's going to be enough, so Brandon draws the nuts and wins on his turn 4 with 2 Madcap Skills and a Gore Clan Rampager. So that was a quick one. We saw a pretty good first game in which Brett uh, stabilized but just couldn't beat a follow-up Boros Reckoner after he cleared the board. And in game 2, we saw the nuts out of Brandon's Gruel Aggro deck. Stealing a quick one on game four. We've got a half hour left in the round, so we're going to step out and find another feature match, and we'll have them move over. So stick around. We'll be right back. While these guys are doing this, remind everybody, if you are East Coast Regional to the great state of West Virginia, then we would love to have you come down to our Star City Games Invitational Qualifier on Saturday, August 17th. The event starts at 12 noon. It's a $25 standard tournament with a $250 cash prize to the winner, as well as invitation to any of the Star City Games Invitationals throughout the rest of the year. Pack prizes as listed to the top eight. The top eight also gets SCG open points if you want to try and qualify for the Invitational uh, manually. You also get an exclusive play mat and a top eight pin. And there will be additional prize support based on attendance. That all goes down here at Lost Legion Games and Comics in South Charleston, West Virginia. You can head over to LostLegionGames.com for more information or ZachSellsMagic.com as we do have uh, lots of information about it on our Facebook page. Last time we had one of these, we had 52 people from four states come show up. Uh, and it was an excellent event and everyone had a great time. Uh, so hopefully you can make it down if you are in the, uh, close to making that drive. It starts at noon, so you can drive a good two or three hours and not have to get up at the crack of dawn. But for those of you who just physically cannot make it, I will be streaming that live, like we're doing right now from the Magic Room Closet, twitch.tv slash Magic. So mark your calendars August 17th. There are no regional uh, Grand Prix Star City events. There's no pre-releases. There's no game days. It's the perfect Saturday for that. 
So if you've ever wanted to come down and play at the shop, if you ever want to come and visit with myself or any of the other stream regulars, that would be an ample time. And more importantly, it definitely helps out the shop who's been so gracious in letting us do this for the last ten and a half months. Alright, so it looks like these guys are uh, getting ready to fire up here into game two. So Brandon Hart's going to try and break even with his Jund mid-range deck. Uh, Brandon's been piloting Jund mid-range for quite a while. He has a lot of... he basically has one of standard and can play whatever he wants, but I think Jund is his deck of choice. And then Justin has been on the uh, reanimator plan for quite a while as well. So both these players very familiar with these archetypes. We'll see how this goes. A shout out in the uh, chat to the uh, very uh, hilariously named Fudge Nipples, who's watching from Scotland. Well, thanks for watching. From across the pond. I'm trying to see what time it is here. It's like 9 o'clock, so it's a solid 3 in the morning your way, I would imagine. 2 in the morning at least. And here we are into it. Dueling Chalklands, Dueling Arborels to start out. Both of these decks are Mana L strategies trying to ramp into their high end. Looks like we're going to see a Farseek here. We've often said uh, numerous times in the chat, the mid-range deck or control deck that gets to land the turn 2 Farseek on the play has a huge percentage advantage in standard currently. a.m. in Scotland. We're getting confirmation. I forgot about the summertime. There's no uh, daylight savings. I think it's six hour difference in the winter months. Oh, I made a mistake, guys. It's not... Uh, uh, I, I completely misspoke. I knew full well this wasn't the case. Uh, Brandon is playing Jund Agro. As we obviously see from the Falcon Wrath Aristocrat, I just misspoke. He he's played Jun mid range quite a lot, but uh, tonight he's on the aggro plan. So we're now and we're now joined again by Yin Sang. Did, were you actually out there playing some commander? Yeah. When does that ever happen? I besieged you. Well, didn't besiege you, but just like saying we needed everyone. So. Oh, what a jerk. <laughs> well, after like four of my lands Yen, got blown up by someone prime order. Yin is the mono black guy. All right, so we've got, uh, as, you, as you were watching out there, uh, we've got Justin Sayer up a game on Brandon Hart with his Junk Reanimator deck and Brandon piloting Jund Aggro. But uh, Brandon in a pretty good spot here with Justin already down to 14. We're, uh, we've got a Aristocrat on, on board. We just landed a hasty Flinthoof War. Looks like eight coming over. So we're going to need a Thrag Task or some kind of shenanigan here. We have an Unburial Rites, but the uh, the, the, the mulch did not uh, did not hit there. And there is the Vizcopa Bloodlord. No, Vizcopa Blood, Blood Baron. Baron. Yeah, I don't really know what I'm doing, but uh, Brandon just shows him the Thundermaw Hellkite, and that's enough to get uh, Justin to scoop him up. Bloodlord, uh, Blood Baron is very good, but not so much against nine power of flyers. So we move to game three. I keep forgetting that Blood Baron doesn't fly. He's a vampire. He should fly. Well, fly. a lot of the vampires don't fly, actually. Yeah, unfortunately. That's why Nocturnus gives them flying or whatever. Um... So both of these players, this of course is round three, and both of these players are undefeated. This is our table one pairing. Also undefeated currently is Max Turner playing Jun Minrange, Chad Watson playing Junk Tokens, Troy King playing, I assume, Ban Aggro. Aaron Daly's undefeated playing his uh, Boros Aggro homebrew. We just saw Brandon Gibbs go up to 3-0 and playing Gruul aggro. And then of course both of the competitors in the match you're watching currently. Yeah, 
Yeah, someone's calling it the Bacon Lord of Baron Copa. Bacon Lord of Blizz Copa. I'm fine with all of this. <laughs> I am fine with all of this. In a few a few hours. <laughs> It'd been much funny if you said I haven't had bacon in like two or three hours. Two or three minutes. <laughs> Happens. Okay. You did you did get some dinner though. I did. What was open? The uh, Vietnamese place. Did you get yeah. some pho? Yeah. Pho. <laughs> it's not a vowel sound that we're very comfortable with here <laughs> in the uh, the states, but yeah. I guess. Well, I mean, that, that's I guess pho is with. also impression. Yeah. Well, pho is what everyone in West Virginia will call it. Just like not just West Virginia, most places. Yeah, most places actually. But but it's also like the euro that like people buy, like the Greek food. It's like I've heard like so many people here just call it like gyro, gyro. which is also fairly common. Yes. <laughs> if you keep if you mispronounce something long enough, then it becomes it becomes correct, right? Yeah, and then everyone's just like, well, we know what you're talking about, and we're not going to bother correcting you because we're going to look like assholes if we do. So you're familiar with the with the furniture chase lounge. No. A chase lounge is like a, I don't know, it's like a chair, but with like an ottoman like built into it. It's basically that kind of like, not a recliner, but like a full. This like it's a it's a piece of furniture like from France, and it's supposed to say it's supposed to be chaise because chaise is the uh, French word for chair. Oh. But we just pronounce it chase lounge, and after like 70 years of doing that, it's just chase lounge. It's like C H E Z. C H A I S E. And this has been uh, Awkward lingu- Linguistics with Zach and Yen. <laughs> I have mentioned before, though, that, uh, like, I mean, there's lots of reasons why Lost Legion is a great card shop, but one of them is that the location is just amazing, because not only do we share a building with a, like, a diner that will li- literally bring you, like, burgers and stuff, like, while you're yeah. playing Magic, they will walk it over here and bring it to you. But we're also within walking distance to what? One, two, three, four... Four Asian restaurants and well, a Mexican like all, place. Just yes. like half the Asian restaurants in, in the state. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. And they're all different. There's the Vietnamese banh mi restaurant right next door. Yeah. Across the street is the pho place you were talking place, about. Yeah. Then there's Main Tin, which is like your classic Chinese takeout. And then Taste of Asia, which is like... It actually has a little bit of everything. Taste of Asia is legit. Like, Taste of Asia is... You can get I, sushi, I, you can get bocce. I think it's actually the only, only no, place that has Thai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what's going on. Hey, Aaron. Sorry, that's what I usually get when I get, I get like a yellow curry. Sorry, talk to that 14-year-old. And, okay. all those, and all those other people okay. that you said were not real people, I saw you talking to all of them. <laughs> I mean, this I, is, I, this I is pretty exactly funny, Adam. I agree with me. I think you're not, you're not like a real person until you're probably like 25. You're still trying to figure out who you are until then. That's what I meant. That's I'm just, what I meant by that. I'm just <laughs> really confused because this is clearly out of context, and I don't know. Okay, so here's the thing. This uh, Nick Nick's cousin... Mm-hmm. Is a 14 year old girl. Okay, was that what she, she was here? She looks a bit more mature than you would think. All right. And I still didn't Let's actually. No, no, no. We I are keeping this. <laughs> I still didn't actually say anything. I just said, "Oh, there's a woman here. I better suck in my gut." And then everyone just takes that like to yeah. the weirdest extreme, and that's creepy. I'm not a creepy guy, and it. That's I, not even like a creepy thing to I say. Know. That's like. <laughs> that's <laughs> like that's a natural thing that all men do but, around any female. But everyone, is like, everyone put made the me chest so. Comes. Everyone was like, oh, you're coming onto a fortune. No, but I think, Aaron, as we are ignoring this game entirely, uh, oh, I, I thought think, they were still shuffling. I them, think sorry. a part of that might be because everyone hates you. Oh. Yeah. Had you... Were, I, I'm really glad I'm visiting. I had just assumed you knew. That's probably why I haven't been able to draft my box. <laughs> no one wants to hang out with me. Strangaroo, guys. Strangaroo. Game day also, I thought that participation. Girl was next girlfriend, but. I did, too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Well, thing is, even the comments maybe, maybe they, she still is. Even but. the comments that they... That, <laughs> That's brutal. Even, but the, even the comments they made probably creeped her out, even though I didn't say anything or even thought anything All was right. weird. And it, it makes me sad. I officially declare you not a creeper. Thanks. I disagree. You heard Meanwhile, it here <laughs> Meanwhile, let's get back to talking about actual Dude, the Strangle Root is doing some work. He is. What is that? Is a strangle root guys. That is a the, the veral, other thing that he just Verals. Verals. Oh, okay. Which eats an abrupt decay, which is probably exactly what needs to happen Wait. there. Oh, can't be Ah, Verals, the single reason Death's Shadow tri- or quadrupled in price. <laughs> and never saw play, because yeah. that's the kind of deck that doesn't work. Yeah, but that particular guy... I, I don't know, I've never tried to play it. I can see it working, though. 
uh, linear decks have to be like very strong and very consistent, otherwise they just get blown out by... There's no plan B for that deck? I haven't seen any lists. I mean, it beats down, but like... I don't know. Is that a... That is a Falcon Wrath Aristocrat, ah. which is one of the uh, best cards in this matchup. I think we're going to throw a uh, Restoration Angel in front of it. The angel, God, like a the angel is going. Well, no, he's just going to. Uh, I would uh, probably sack that to the. Isn't that the correct play, Yim? To sack this guy. He flashed an angel to block the strangle root. Wouldn't you just sack it to the aristocrat? Just cause. What 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 other thing happened? Nothing. I don't think it matters. I think it's one of those like super narrow things, which like once in a thousand games might. Oh, There's no untap mana. Died? Never mind. Yeah. Never mind. What, what's the bonus that Falcon Wrath gets for a second? That's something if it's not a, indestructible. Indestructible. If it's a human, it gets the plus one plus one count. I mean, probably yeah. I mean, just just so, in the most like. So just seen who Justin Sarah was. So bad at names. Well, you have, I mean, you don't play here. You don't get to play here as much during the school year as you like everyone else. So that's just very like kind of on and off too. Like, uh, I've well, seen he, him he, he's part of the, uh, the the group that goes to school at Morgantown, so oh, okay. he's only here in the summers. God, people are still in school. Jesus. Really? <laughs> no, 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 they're back. <laughs> next year, uh, not this year, but the next school year, uh, Connell County schools are going year-round schedule. Oh, ugh. sucks to be a parent. So we're going to uh, okay. serve in here. Oh, okay. Did you you really attack into a blood bearer. Yeah, but you can sack it. I assume he has a, yeah. He's going to sack it anyway. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Brandon knows what he's doing. I don't. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> no, I don't play Magic in like three weeks. I'm rusty. Oh, I don't, three I don't weeks. Know. I like, oh, yeah, yeah, I like it. Yeah. Three weeks is an eight. <laughs> ages. <laughs> playing, you haven't eaten bacon in over two hours, and you haven't played Magic <laughs> over three weeks. Exactly. Club Master of the Wind. Well, not, not in this situation. Windmaster is a very insane kind of card. Lots of value. I like when when it came out, no one liked it until someone took it to a GP or something, and it oh, shot up. Well, no, it was it. It wasn't that people didn't like it. It's just people knew it was a good card, but I guess didn't realize exactly how good. And then, much like every time, the the week after the release, or two weeks after the release, when the standard. Pro Tour is, and then Brian Kibler wins the Pro Tour with four of them. Everybody's like, "Oh, that guy is ridiculously good!" And then it shot up to like thirty dollars from like a from like a twelve to fifteen. I've managed to crack mine all from packs, and I still only have three. But I, I opened way too many packs of Dark Essential. I bought one from Logan uh, to put in my cube so that he could play in a pre-release. <laughs> I don't know why we're using these frog lizards. I guess there's no wolves in my token box. I gotta sort that token box out, man. <laughs> oh, he was just rapid hybridization. Yeah, I think he was just trolling me. Oh, we were trying to troll you earlier, like playing the lands ahead of the creatures. Yeah, I figured that one out. But I then, couldn't, uh, you couldn't do it. You trolled yourself. I, I, I just couldn't maintain. <laughs> so uh, Blood Baron serves in here, drops uh, Brandon down to 14 and an eight, uh, eight point life swing, basically. This is Garrick Relentless. And we're gonna shoot the Huntmaster. Garrett. Garrett Relentless. Garrett. <laughs> I think this is weird. If you're going to play the other gear, if you're going to play the checklist card, you should just have the gear get a clear sleeve. <laughs> like, Why is he? Yeah, that, I don't understand. <laughs> uh, I, I do that too. But, but a... you're weird, and we all know, <laughs> we all expect that. But Justin, but isn't that the point of having the checklist card? But I stopped playing <laughs> checklist cards because when I did that at the SCG event, like the commentators were like, "Why is he playing checklist cards?" Isn't the is it the point of playing like opaque sleeves to be able to not play checklist cards? At the Columbus Legacy Tournament, when Brett got the round three feature match, they were complaining about his white bordered mountains and his <laughs> burn deck. Uh, but secretly, that's exactly what Brett wants to happen. It's like Chad. <laughs> yeah, just trolling them. The thing is, I like I actually him. talked to Chad like a little later in the week, and he's like, I didn't realize that I was just trolling everyone. <laughs> See, I like having one of each blend. Like I don't like having them all the same. I very much like them to match. Angel of Serenity. Ooh, that's boring. Clear your board. Well, crap. I hate it. It's a foil angel, too, so of course it, it triggers twice. <laughs> so we're going to plus one the uh, Garrick, make a death touch woof. So for the... And oh, serve wait. in with the Blood Baron. Didn't he put that Garrick in? He put the Garrick in and shot the Huntmaster. So it went down to one. Oh, so it was immediately, that's why he had it flipped over right when he came out. Yeah, yes. Okay. I thought he just didn't want to turn it around. No, no, no. <laughs> well, I mean, I would play Garrick <laughs> This side half the time, though. 
Yeah, yeah the, all Senator could just choose. The survival of the fittest side. Yeah. Yeah. Also not that excited about New Kirk. I don't like New Kirk either. I'm just annoyed at all the names. The names Shaka? are so terrible. Color of Beasts. Bonfire off the top? Four. For three? three? Uh, Kills Garrick at least. I wish it was for four at least. But I guess got it's, mass brood. It's... Well, I mean, he's playing the aggro deck, deck. like... He, he, well, I mean, he, he can cast his four drops. Deck, but you want your four drops and you want your bonfires to hit. What's yeah. the, uh, At least this keeps him from dying because now there's only nine damage on board. Yeah. What's What are the stats on the uh, angel? It's like it's five, a five six. Seven, five, five six. And a four four blood baron. And blood baron gets his big bonus when. Uh, when you have over thirty life. Uh, so that's, that's like not, ten and thirty, I think. Right? That's not going to be. In, but it's got life length though. Yes, that's the most important part of this. Is that. Not only is Justin threatening to win this game, but he's put himself out of, you know, his own bonfire range and isn't going to lose to a, a series of hasty creatures. I'm going to go ahead and cast Grizzly Salvage just in case. Also Overgrown really too. sorry that the first round matches were probably really boring. Probably just keep that angel, right? Were you one feature match? Yeah, the first one. It oh, was, then it has to be boring. It was very quick. Oh, oh thanks. <laughs> so... <laughs> You know, I don't think I've we ever said anything it. mean to you ever. <laughs> but but I troll people all the time. Last week I did, everyone. did confirm that we do have first aid kit for if you want to <laughs> <laughs> get something for that burn. <laughs> I like how you actually had to break out the first aid kit just to hammer it home. I, mean, <laughs> I know our viewers at home can't see that, but I mean, you guys got a lot out of that visual. <laughs> I did. That visual aid. <laughs> what is this? Never mind. No, we're not going to talk about the pouring week. right now. <laughs> yeah, the pouring. So what did he keep off the Grizzly Savage? <laughs> no, I don't think it matters. But wait, That's why is it, why, are, why are they still playing? Because he's well, maybe Brandon's, Brandon's, Brandon's tapped out. Uh, well, he's also already attacked, so Brandon's literally just out one. From we're him. still playing because um, okay, because Brandon's Brandon probably. hasn't scooped, and there's no it's reason like, to stop playing. It's well, there might be like Dreadboard tried to slip or something. I don't know if he has it. Wait, I don't know. But that was, what's that, happening? That was an interesting spot there as Brandon uh -huh. draws an overgrown tomb, and that's it. Uh, he fla he unburial writes the Restoration Angel, then realized that, uh, which is an interaction you don't often see because the Barons, I think, are sideboard still, is that you can't blink it because it's pro-white. So you can't target it with your own Restoration Angel. True, there right? is only eight minutes left in the round, so we are not going to have time to... Uh, to add another feature match, but you should have plenty of time to uh, to do this for me. Follow us on our various forms of social media. Have you guys uh, follow us on our various forms of social on, media? On Facebook, that's, <laughs> the only, that. that's the only social media I'm on because uh, I don't like anything else. That's fine. Fifth Amendment. And but for YouTube those of you is not <laughs> social media, is it? I don't know. You can I can communicate with you through there. I actually get a lot of messages through YouTube. Well, thanks. But but it's more for me because I put the videos up. But yeah, subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow me on Twitter. Obviously, follow us here on Twitch. Click the follow button that's on your screen right now, and then follow us on our Facebook page. If you only do one of them, go to the Facebook page. There is a lot of. Uh, as a as a as a casual consumer of magic content, I would imagine that you enjoy the discussions that we have on our Facebook page. There's a I lot, do, of, because lot of information up it's, there. It's kind of like the commentary that I've complimented you on before. It's actually interesting. Like, we talk about some decently interesting conversations that go on there. Yeah, and it's a good. It basically it's a magic news aggregator. There's interesting tidbits throughout the week. I don't know. I think it's it's worth a like. It's worth a quick like. I'll agree. We did pass yeah. 1,200. Uh, this week we passed 1,200 subscribers on YouTube. Hey, all which right. I think is somewhat. If you had told me 11 months ago that there would be 1,200 people subscribed to our YouTube account, I, I would. Do, have I do like how you're shamelessly you generating traffic to your cube, though. That's nice. <laughs> I'm the fourth most drafted cube uh, yeah, in the world. I know. But in Almet's but, site. But oh yeah. But uh, <laughs> but, uh, but that's a lot of that, that contest was a lot of fun and people talked about how they enjoyed that. But, um, the thing is, I've drafted your cube before, and you have never come to draft mine, so I didn't want to... I did draft yours. I drafted the first time you ever did it. No, 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 no. I mean on the site. Oh, I haven't. I usually just draft mine on the site. I would love to draft your cube. We can do that under any circumstance. Well, what I, what I try to do is I'm trying draft to... other people's peasant cubes to hopefully that they would return the favor some and ideas. draft mine. And I'll look at theirs, too, and yeah. So we're going to talk about some spoilers here. We're going to talk about the good ones later. But right now I want to talk about this guy. <laughs> Colonian Tusker? Uh, I first saw this guy. No. no, we talked about him earlier. Yeah, it's two mana for three three. Like, isn't this the first time we've seen like a just a vanilla three three at two mana? Uh, uh, Garut's. No, he's a three two trample. Gr uh, he's three two trample. Okay. Bye bye. 
I guess it's possible. Oh, well, I mean, but it's relevant because like a three three is infinitely more playable than a three two because you can actually attack into something and not not have it get killed. Well, it's killed. also relevant because shock is going to be the de facto burn spell in M14. Yeah. I don't know. I just think we like they talk about power creep and it doesn't exist, but in scars we get a free one one and now we get a three three for two. Well, power creep though, I like to think that is like as them fixing their mistakes from early magic where things were just awful. I think they're just. Well, it's also funny because like it's power creep on some things, but power decline in other things because they screwed up a lot of cards the other way uh, to start, such as ancestral recall, such as any mox. <laughs> Such as Soul Ring. I, I, people forget how broken Soul Ring is. Well, no, we know how broken it is, but then the, there, there, there was nothing to compare it to when Richard Garfield was in his garage concocting Alpha. Dude, Let's talk okay about this guy. I think he was in a garage. Mm -hmm. Okay, figurative. I think we all know what back. I was going for, though. I'm sorry. <laughs> and by the way, if he has a PhD, he's probably buried under student debt. PhD, <laughs> of course, stands for Pretty Huge Degree. Um, let's talk about this guy. This is actually seeing a lot of... Of course, obviously, Aaron, you were talking about before, like, um, being into, like, the, cu the cube... I don't want to say community, because there's not part of any community, but I, I, I very much enjoy cube. I have my own, and I always look at the look at the new cards that come out, what slots oh, in. And there's not a whole lot of cards from the new set that are, like, auto-includes in the cube. But there's about three or four that are being debated. And Young Pyromancer is one that we see a lot. It's a two power for two, so it fits in the aggro curve. Uh, and then basically when instant sorcery spells, like every red trigger, you get a 1-1 one, one red token. Not even red. token. Not even red. That's, that's another big part of it. It's just instant or sorcery. So it'd be interesting to see how this guy slots into, uh, like if there actually is like more of like a red deck wins. Because there's a lot of aggro decks, but none of them are really like red decks. Because you're not burning anybody. You're playing Searing Spears. Your best burn spell is a 4-4 four, four Trampler. Is that by Willow Storm? This guy? Uh, I don't know. You would have to build some weird, like, empty... You would have to, like, be on the empty goblin... Could this guy replace goblin electromancer? No. No, because, like, if you're just on the grape shot plan, like, electromancer generates so much mana. Like, this guy, if you're on, like, a empty the warrens into warren instigator plan... Not warren instigator, um, bushwhacker. Then, like, this might be viable, but I think that's probably... probably straight. I think the other storm version is probably better, but... Um, I mean, it might be kind of noobish of me, but when I see him, I instantly want to make a standard deck with him and Gutter Snipe. Sure. And just cast yeah. Snapcaster for the three months that it's going to be in standard together, or two months. Mm -hmm. I, I think that would be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I, I it probably people... will not work as well as I want it to. Well, I think a lot of people are probably going to experiment with this guy in standard. Like, yeah, there's a lot of... Uh, something. Spike Moe in the chat agrees with you there. He said you stole your idea. And then uh, Turret, <laughs> Turret Dave mentioning in the chat that this is not an aggro card, it's more of a tempo engine. Uh, well, I mean, I can see applications in both. I mean, if you play this on your turn, if you chain this into, like, making a free guy for, like, literally for, for, for no it, no cost, like, Emissary, I'm not saying this is good, but Emissary into this guy, the next turn, Searing Spear, their blocker, make a 1-1 one, one and attack. Like, it's still, if it, at worst, the thing attacks for two on the third turn, so. Well, there, there are a lot of things, I, I, I see. It's a like fun build around me card. I like American control with mm -hmm. him. Then you, you've got Izzet and Boros Charm. And you can, all, all and you can of just and for, quality spells. And for two and a half months, you can play him and Dover Secrets. <laughs> Get there. <laughs> let's talk about some. Uh, let's talk about some real and cards. Index. Cards that we index. <laughs> That's what we want to be doing. Then you bring Portent back. I want a modern reprint of Portent. Let's talk about some cards that actually matter here. Um, this. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> This card, um, this it's is always a, a pleasure talking to you. Here. <laughs> this is another card that I don't think is good enough for standard. Uh, I'll make it bigger here. It's an Ogre Battle Driver. Uh, it's a three three for four, and whenever another creature enters the battlefield under control, it gets plus two plus zero in haste. Actually, it might be good enough. Like, what if you put him with the the last guy? Yeah, this is like the new, like. This occupies the same slot as Hellrider. And I think in any discussion we're going to have about the four drops, this is like we talked about Fire Main Avenger from like months ago, which we said like it's good, but it's not Hellrider. And until Hellrider is gone, we're not like you can't be yeah, certain. Like, this guy like is very similar in theme. Um, the problem with him is he doesn't have haste himself. So he's not as good on turn four as Hellrider is. But his ability is like no joke, and it's not when you cast it, it's when they enter the battlefield. So like this guy into like Krinko's Command, or if there's some kind of like weird Boros deck where you're casting like Lingering Souls into this guy, like that's a pretty brutal chain. Um, you know, it, oh, it, I, you just gave me some great ideas. I don't know if it's good enough for cube because the cube the cube spot the cube four drop spot in red is already pretty jam-packed with uh, Avalanche Riders Koth, Keldon Marauders. 
Um, CB, you run... A, like like ravenous baboons in some cubes? See, I run... Well, this guy wouldn't go in my cube, because I'm on peasant, so never mind. Yeah. Haha. <laughs> I don't know why I laugh like that. Defeated. <laughs> but, it'll be, but it'll be interesting to see if this guy is like standard playable. Like it is, you know, the, the, the format is dominated by aggro decks right now. This is a very strong aggro card. I agree, but I, I like him with Young Pyromancer or whatever that last one. Well, I think this guy about. would definitely have to wait till like October to be. Well, the question is like, is it better than Exalva? Really, is like the main thing. Because I think because I think <laughs> Exalva itself has haste. I think the only so. reason people aren't playing Exalva right now is because Hellrider still exists. But once Hellrider goes, like Exalva just slides into that spot. I guess it depends if you're playing red, black, or just red. Have we talked about that magic since this card was printed? Have we done a stream since this got spoiled? This card is ridiculous. Like this card is. Snapcaster. Anything. The first thing I thought of. Anything. And it's very interesting because, like, we've seen this kind of ability. We saw it with Illusionist Bracers in the last court or in the in the last block. We see, we see it with uh, Rings of Bright Heart, which is. But those mostly activated abilities. And this is like one of the few cards that like. Is there anything else that does this? I don't know if there is. I'm sure there is. The flavor text. Just, I've never seen that. Like, there's the flavor text. A triggered ability is da 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 da. Like, I've never had to, I've never seen a card where they would need to explain that. It's not flavor text, it's like... I mean, reminder text, text excuse me. Yeah. You're right. But yeah, but, I mean, I like the name, too. Strionic Resonator. I don't, I don't think there's else. anything else that did this. Uh, yeah, because like we would have seen it in or something. Yeah, or something. they don't really like to interact with the triggered abilities that much. <laughs> yeah. There's not a whole lot of cards like, that what, like, like stifle that deals. Yes, yeah. and trick binds, yeah. and but that's but, but that's it. Slime. Like those two, it, like void slime. But they're all three like in the same idea of like stifle effects. Yeah, but it's weird. I think this is. It's weird that they're doing this at least to me in a core set because it seems more complex than your beginning player is going to be used to. True. And I know it's a rare. And I know it kind of explains what a triggered ability is, but it's that is a giant I, card. I, I, ever I agree, but it, but it also in the same kind of uh, in the same vein in terms of appealing to the casual players. Like casual players love to copy stuff. You know what I mean? That's why they keep yeah. printing reverberate and diver uh, whatever those blue and the red cards are, basically. Um, but like, I mean, let's just talk about this card. And what it physically does is two mana. It's a it's a two cost rock that you tap two and you copy target triggered ability. Like this is like. Like, this is legit standard playable. Like, I don't know where... I, I'm not... Listen, I'm not good enough... I don't know if you guys have figured this out. I'm not a, pro, a professional level Magic player. I haven't played standard in, like, a, like 19, 20 months. But, well, like, this card seems to me like... Let's look at all the cards in Magic right now that are dominating the format. Snapcaster Mage. Thrag Tusk. Restoration Angel. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Huntmaster. Geist. Thug. Geist of St. Chad. Angels. Okay, so the five cards we just mentioned all apply so to this. Good. And they all do things so ridiculous. The only thing that's not real good about it is uh, you can't blink the same Thrag Tusk twice with Restoration Angel. You have to have two of them because it, the first one comes back. <laughs> the first one, I explained that on the site. Like, the first one comes back. The, uh, yeah, you just... What you know, the, what yeah. the, what the, what's the early uh, speculation on the price of this card? I don't think it's going to be worth that much, but I think it's the kind of card that... it's. This is like Mimic Fat. Well, it's that kind of card that's it's going to go on every commander tag that anyone's ever yeah. built, and then, like, four copies of it are going to be ridiculous in about two, two, three, four years, and it's just... It's going to be a solid, like, two or three dollar card once in standard, just slowly going to go up. Well, Mimic Fat wasn't exactly a standard playable. It was oh. played a couple decks. Oh, never mind. Yeah. I'm thinking about a sideboard. It was like a, it was a sideboard card. They, sometimes they'd play one of them in a, in a pod deck, yeah. just for value. But, but this might actually... What about a... I'm sorry, I interrupted. Jace... Jace 4 is first ability. Yeah, that's a trigger ability. Oh my gosh! It's so good! Jace... Jace... Yeah. Oh, the minus one, minus one? No, minus one, minus one. Oh. Is it the delayed trigger? Do you have to copy it on your turn? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that sucks, but... I don't know, this card's gonna be bonkers. Is the chat... Was the chat have anything to talk about it? I think they're talking about something else. They're asking the hell does that card description Oh, have it's made? very good in uh, modern pod... It's good in pod decks. Like, just copy... E like, your whole deck is Enter the Board abilities. Just copy everything. I'm, I, I'm mainly thinking of creatures with Enter the Battlefield. I'm thinking of Fiend Hunter, something simple like that. Yeah. I mean, we can just list yeah, the. Uh, that'd be a great. That's a great uh, task for the chat. So the 166 people watching me, just start list. We've already mentioned five stalwarts of standard. Just start listening cards in standard that this card uh, interacts with. Angel of with. Serenity. Angel of oh Serenity. Zealous conscripts. 
But so the problem with Angel of Serenity, you already got to get to, what, seven to get it out in the first place? You just have to get to four and hit the right mulch. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, all right, sorry. Mulch find water wherever it dies. Oh, my gosh. That's it. We're going to build Slug. the mono green, ramp into Big Garrick, play Wolf by Worm, <laughs> copy it. <laughs> We're gonna die on turn four to Gore playing Rampager, <laughs> but man, we're gonna have when we play that other guy who's playing slime. when we're playing acidic slime. Uh, no, <laughs> worm coil engine. Wow. Yeah. I want eight copies of this card. Uh, annihilator. I'll copy Annihilator. Oh my god. It's gonna it's gonna wreak havoc in Commander. I, I'm I'm really been scared lately with the way Commander is going in the sense that like. Things are getting too good. Primordials. Primordials have, have is really uh, copies primordial triggers. Yeah, I know. But people I can't think wait for that. Blow up every land. It's Alec here that at least I'm sure plenty of other people do it. Do the Sylvan primordial, flash it or blank it, reanimate it. Do just copy it and it just I want to kill. Myself. I only do that in every green deck that I own. <laughs> Um, so let's get off that topic a little bit because we could probably talk about cards that interact with it for the rest of the world. Can we talk about Phyrexian <laughs> Obliterator. Oh, wow. Empty the Wards. Oh, that's a very good point. Even we were talking about, we, we missed this entirely. Storm is a triggered ability. So, so it would, would it double the... Yes. Oh my gosh. It's another Power Majors essential. Yes. It's another ritual. The band season song and print... Now it's a lot more mana intensive. And, and you can't abrupt the chaos. Can talk more about Shionic Resonator, yeah. please? All right. Uh, but I do want to talk about mana with West Sliver. <laughs> Thanks, JB. It's simply because... Um, I got to move... I got to move... I got to move the burn kit for uh, <laughs> for that sick burn that Aaron got. But <laughs> we'll talk about Mana with Sliver because they're trying to push slivers and they've reprinted. Wait, why do we have standings? I thought it was five rounds. They've reprinted. This isn't the, standings. This isn't standings. They've reprinted the func. They functionally reprinted the two slivers that count, which is Muscle Sliver and Jim Hyde Sliver. So yeah. the so the Birds of Paradise Sliver and the Anthem effect. You are at. Um, oh, he just printed. I'm in two. All right. Nice. You're undefeated. Thanks. This, so what happened to me tonight was I made a gruel deck at home, mm -hmm. and then I grabbed the wrong deck box when I came here, and I got this Boros deck that got its butt kicked harshly last week, and now I'm undefeated. But part of it is that I accidentally put the sideboard for the gruel deck in with this Boros deck, so I had to reconfigure <laughs> the sideboard. It's, I've got four Madcap skills on my sideboard. Well, one of the and they have one. One, sol skills, one's one solution you could try is to cry about it. But he's undefeated. So